everybody, I'm Don, and today I want to talk to you about a new feature of Active Cluster known as Active Active Async. Before we go too deeply into that, I'd like to review um, our current asynchronous technology, and then we'll see how that translates into Active Active Async as part of an Active Cluster configuration. So, to start off, um, we have two arrays, um, Array A and Array C. Um, we've got hosts that are connected to Array A, uh, host 1 and 2, um, and then they're mapped to uh, these two volumes here, each running uh, different applications. So the way that we do asynchronous replication is we use something called a protection group. So we'll put the, the two volumes that correspond with the host 1 and the host 2 application. So those two volumes are now mapped into a P group. And then the P group, we can set a replication schedule. So we can say how often we're taking snapshots, how often we're sending them. Um, also, as part of setting up the P group, we'll also designate a target. So to represent um, the target in this case, we'll draw a connection from uh, array A over to our array C. So this, is, this represents the WAN connection between the two arrays. Um, it can be 10 or 25 gigabit Ethernet. And once this connection is established, I'm now able to replicate the P group containing the volumes. And then based on the replication schedule that I set, I'm able to create snapshots that also uh, are going to be part of what we uh, ship across. So I'm going to just draw S1. S2 to represent the snapshots uh, of those volumes. So <clears throat> asynchronous replication is extremely efficient. It uses uh, the snapshot differencing, so we're only sending the unique changes. So just represent here. So we're just sending the, the delta, so to speak, uh, between these two arrays. Okay, and the, the deltas are set across to the same P group uh, over on array C. Okay, so our P group um, that we set up on the array A, now is replicated. And then inside the P group, I have my uh, snapshots that correspond with the, uh, the volumes that I uh, had on my array A. So I have snapshots here that I can instantiate as volumes. Um, so the way that I do that is the uh, volumes um, that I wish to go to can either be existing volumes, or um, if I wish, I can just create net new volumes where I copy the snapshot out to a volume here, then the second one will go to another volume, goes there, and then these volumes can be mapped to my DR site host, and I can use that for recovery. So, you know, very simple, very bandwidth efficient, so we're sending data that's compressed um, across the WAN. Um, we're also doing pattern removal, so again, um, saving bandwidth, and we're also deduping. We're only um, getting data sent to the target that the target does not already have. So uh, all about saving you money um, in terms of, you know, the amount of bandwidth you need to dedicate for uh, replication. It also benefits you from a synchronization perspective. We're sending less data, so you get a faster sync. Um, you, the, as mentioned, um, you lower your, your cost of um, the monthly um, fee for uh, paying for bandwidth. So, so really a, a big win from a, from a replication perspective. Um, a very robust way to um, have a copy at a third site to bring up you know, your DR site if you need it. You could also do testing uh, at the DR site. And all of this is built into Purity and included with the two flash arrays um, when, you, when you purchase them. So that's kind of a, a summary of uh, async replication and, and kind of where we were. And now we can transition into active active async and what that looks like. Um, I think you'll find, however, that knowing asynchronous replication is going to be very simple for you to translate into active-active asynchronous replication, um, which uses almost exactly the same technology, just uh, a slight difference in the connection topology. All right, so we talked about asynchronous replication and how that works. Let's turn our attention to active cluster, which uses synchronous replication. Um, for our diagram, what I'm going to do is draw a third array that allows us to configure active cluster uh, between these two sites. Um, and then we'll connect it over to um, our third site. So let's draw the third array here, array B. Got array B, and then we'll set up our synchronous connection between the two. So active cluster, again, is synchronous replication between two flash arrays. Um, 
the, the reason that we're doing that is so that we can expose these same volumes. Let's say host one and two are part of a, a cluster. Um, we're, we're able to now expose these two volumes from array B as well. Um, and in order to do that with active cluster, um, we need to use what's called a pod. And a pod is just a logical container that we put volumes into that we wish to stretch. So let's draw that, that pod around those volumes. So I'm going to put a dashed line around this entire construct. So now, not only are the volumes members of the pod, but the protection group is also part of the pod. And as such, it gives us some additional capabilities that I'm going to talk about. Before we talk about that, let's talk a little bit more about active clusters. So host one and two right now look like they're represented um, only connected to array A. With active cluster, they can also be connected through array B back to these volumes. So each of these volumes can be connected to the hosts through the second array. And before I forget, let's also put a name on this pod. We'll call it uh, pod one. So active cluster uh, uses the, the pod to designate the fact that these volumes are now stretched, they're synchronously replicated, and if something should happen to either array B or array A, because it's synchronously replicated, the host can simply continue running applications without disruption and fail over transparently um, as far as the paths are concerned. So from a business continuity perspective, I can lose an entire data center, perhaps the one that contains array B, and continue running my business and my mission critical applications um, at site one in, or on a flash array A. So that's really the, the big benefit. So, so if we have this type of capability across two sites and we have an out-of-region data center, um, Array C, that could literally be anywhere on the planet, now we can combine this into what we now call active-active async. From a replication perspective, it represents using both of these technologies together. And we'll put up here um, on our benefits list how it even improves the asynchronous replication that we talked about earlier in the video. So number one, uh, to set up active-active async, we need to establish a connection between array B and array C. So now A, B, and C all are connected to one another. Uh, we get the same sorts of bandwidth benefits uh, from this, but in this case, they're load balanced. So we're actually able to load balance replication traffic. across these links, the target array in this case is going to request content from either of the source arrays and use whichever link is fastest, lowest latency, maybe most bandwidth. And in doing so, again, is going to balance and get the best possible performance uh, across these links. So that's, that's one change. Uh, another nice change is um, because I have active-active data centers, if one of these sites is lost, Competing solutions would um, fail over and then have to recopy every single piece of data, basically what's known as rebaselining. With our solution, there is no rebaseline. Another nice benefit of this solution from a management perspective is um, all of it can be um, done without you doing anything. What's, what's better than administrative ease is no administration at all. So it's low touch. If, for example, array B fails, array A simply carries on, all of that happens automatically without administrative intervention. And finally, if it's not obvious from what I've drawn, this is an extremely resilient solution. So. Instead of being in a situation where one array impacts your ability to replicate off to the third site, with this solution, losing one array or the other doesn't matter, doesn't impact you. And even if there's a regional disaster that impacts both sites that are, say, only you know, a millisecond apart, 100 miles apart, you can have a third out-of-region copy of your data, provides operational recovery, or just a way for you to do additional testing, 
reporting, um, keeping uh, QA happy with the, t with the things that they like to do, um, all as part of an included solution built into the Flash Array in Purity 5.2. I would argue every single thing on my list here is an advantage over a competing solution. So if you have further questions about this solution, please go to purestorage.com or contact your Pure account team, and they'll be glad to give you more details about active-active asynchronous replication. Thank you.